Courtyard by Marriott presents CNBC TV 18 Disruptors. Hi there, it's the Disruptors on CNBC TV 18. Today we explore the story of a brand, a man who single-handedly overhauled the water purification system in India. His brand is a generic for RO water purification system in India. For 13 years, the messaging has been clear and consistent. Kent Deta hai sabse shudh pani. Take a look. Mr. Mahesh Gupta began his career in sales in 1978 with the Indian Oil Corporation after graduating from IIT Kanpur. In 1998, Mr. Gupta charted out on a new enterprise after jaundice gripped his children in a posh South Delhi colony. Realizing that drinking water was the culprit, he researched and analyzed the available water purifiers in the market. After several trials, Mr. Gupta made his own water purifier and became confident that his product is good enough to be marketed. Today, with almost a quarter of the market share in the RO Mineral plus RO segment, Kent RO Systems Limited is the most dynamic water purifier brand in India. Today, Kent RO is the most dynamic and visible water purifier company. The credit for taking India's unorganized water purifier market to an organized industry of nearly half a billion dollars can be entirely given to Mr. Mahesh Gupta. So, how does it feel? You disrupted the RO water purification system single-handedly. Before that, water purifier was AquaGuard. Well, I, I'm quite happy about it that it has happened. Okay. But uh, to me, the more important thing is to give clean water to the, the human beings. You are pretty humble in the way you talk about your disruption. But let's go back to your story. You are an IITN from Kanpur. After that, you were working in IOC, a specialist out there with a lot of patents to your name. And then suddenly, water purification, how did that happen? Well, it all happened because I had never used a water purifier till then. But as you what know... What year are we talking about? I'm talking of 97, 98. Okay. Uh, because the water continued to be quite good. And I was a municipal water at that time. I thought that, okay, we are, I, I never paid my attention to a water purifier, in fact. And once the children got sick and then the doctor said it's good to have a water purifier because water is getting contaminated. I realized, yes, what he's saying is right. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, let me buy one. Being an engineer, I always look for the best. And uh, when I inquired that what water purifiers were available, they were the ones which were based on UV light, killing oh. the bacteria. And I said, what is going to happen if there is something is dissolved into this uh, water? They said, no, it can't remove. But then I knew as a scientist that the reverse osmosis water purifiers can remove what is dissolved in water. So I couldn't find one in the country, but having started my small business of oil conservation, I had the setup. So I said, okay, let me import components and make one for myself. And I did one. And then I started using it, I found it good. I said, if I can't find one in the market and people do require this type of water purifier, what am I waiting for? Let me start this as a small business. That's how it got started. Reverse osmosis is a water purification technology that is used to remove ions, molecules and larger particles from drinking water. Reverse osmosis can remove many types of dissolved and suspended species from water that includes bacteria and is used in both industrial processes and the production of potable water. Okay, so basically a problem at home made you aware of a much larger problem in the country Absolutely. and made you an entrepreneur and made you create this empire of water purification. See, as I started using it, it was become difficult to sell it. And as we started selling it, RO purifiers were more relevant in areas which had only ground well water. Hmm. They were not addressing the concern in the municipal water. That's exactly my next question. In fact, you know, as a country, we have 
such different types of water, there is hard water, soft water, mineral water, ground water. How do you come up with one system? Yeah, so that's what we did in 2006, okay. the invention. Wherein the, even with the municipal water, we could remove what is soluble in water, impurity, and still retain the minerals in water. So I made a patent wherein we could retain those minerals in water and that's how we became an inventor of this technology. Okay, so let's talk about a few initial challenges. You were a serviceman first and then started your business and grew it gradually with a product that wasn't existing. How difficult was the climb? Very difficult. I would, uh, if I go back to 98 when we launched it, the price of our RO water purifier was 20,000 rupees in 98 against a normal UV purifier which was available at 3,000 rupees. Oh. A seven time costly product. It was very, very difficult to sell at that price for one year. Number two, we were not a brand at that time. Hmm. People said you will sell it today and later on you run away, who will service the whole product? So it was very difficult to convince people and sell it, but we still kept going. How did we kept going? Because whatever we could sell, let's say in the first year we sold only let's say about 200 pieces. Mm. But whosoever bought our purifier, they said this is a good bottle. Okay. And this is really helping us, we are not going to doctors. So word of mouth. Word of mouth. Fair. That gave me a confidence. See, if I am finding it useful, if these 200 guys are finding useful, at some time we will certainly be successful. So from 298 you moved to 5 lakh in the year gone by? Yes. And uh, uh, tell us a little about the distribution challenges and initial funding, where did that come from? Uh, let's talk about the challenges first. As I said, uh, we were not known entity, so we mm. made progress every year. So 2005 when we designed this new invention and uh, then we wanted to come up and I realized that uh, in consumer space, unless you have a brand, people will not buy you. Mm. So it's like making a very valuable thing and putting it into your vault. Right. And if people don't know about it, I don't think people will buy it. So I said, I need to go and make a branding myself. And that's where when we hired our brand ambassador, Hima Malini in 2005. I'll talk about that. I will definitely come to that. But a question with a brand itself. You were an IIT in, an, an engineer now grappling with finance, grappling with distribution, grappling with the challenges of business. How do you become so perceptive when it came to a brand and the brand perception, brand image, brand ambassador, everything spot on. Because if you shut your eyes, Kent means Shudpani. How did you get to do that? I had a clear vision. Okay. Uh, I would say this is all related to vision. And the vision means not following into footsteps of somebody else. Okay. I didn't bring this industry by copying somebody. So objective here is not to do something. Hmm. Objective here is to achieve some objective. So if you are looking at an objective, you will innovate. So I think I have innovated not only in terms of how to make a television commercial, even how to release it is an art by itself, by understanding where it will be more efficacy. So now that brings me to the question, why Hema Malini and what was so different about the way you released your ad and uh, went about it? Well, as I said, 2005 I decided to have a brand ambassador and then we were trying to zero in who could be our brand ambassador. Okay. Uh, our objective at that time was we wanted an, a woman brand ambassador mm -hmm. because it addresses the women in the house in terms of supplying uh, drinking water to the family. And we wanted some, somebody who is, uh, who is in a midlife. Mm -hmm. We never wanted some, a brand ambassador who is in the early stages of life mm -hmm. because nobody will believe her. Mm -hmm. And we were always looking, we, didn't, we had a small budget, let me be very clear right. again. That's okay. the third thing. So, so we zeroed in and we had few names and Hima Malniji was certainly on top of that list okay. of our thing. But then to get her and to endorse her as a new company was a bit difficult thing. We through, went through that stage in convincing her that it's a good product. Mm -hmm. And she tested the product and she said, yes, it's a good product. I think I must do it for the citizens of the country. And that's how she came in. But then having taken her, we had no money to make a television commercial. <laughs> So you will not believe in 2005 and 2006, we only made print ad with her. Okay, okay. And then 2006, we decided to have a television commercial. Because I am a believer, an old time believer, that I should spend what is in my pocket. Right. And I don't so you have no debt on your books? Right? I have my, no debt even on my books. I never had debts on my book. I'll okay. be very frank with you. I, that's how it has taken me a long time to move to this progress. But that's my philosophy. Hema Malini was skeptical of becoming a brand ambassador at first. In today's day and age, you cannot distinguish between Kent and Hema Malini herself. I think uh, we have done uh, some type of a history and when people say that 
for 13 years a brand ambassador being continuous is a history in the country and I'm happy to be part Not of it. Not only continuous, synonymous. In fact, in the second half of her career, perhaps people would remember her more for Kent than uh, a lot of her movies, with well, all due respect uh, to her. Well, I don't think movies, but she has been a good dancer. She has been a good uh, member of parliament. Mm -hmm. I think people, you have to give credit for her work. In but that she has space. definitely sold more purifier, water purifier than anyone else. Uh, we are happy that she has done that, and she has also <laughs> done it happily. Almost 15% of Kent's annual revenue is spent on advertising. Kent's branding strategy can be summed up in just two words, simple and consistent. Kent is quite the case study in brand building and brand image. Right from the choice of a four-letter simple brand name, a brand color that signifies water, a brand ambassador and the immortal tagline. It is a campaign that has resonated for many years, cut through the clutter and stayed in the minds of the audience. Mahesh Gupta has now taken the house of purity positioning beyond water into air purifiers and home appliances. So you do not want uh, any additional funds from anywhere, PEs, VCs or anything of that I told you the reason behind this. See, I'm, I, I was basically a professional a serviceman. So uh, having achieved something, I never wanted to lose what I have achieved. Uh, so my appetite for taking risk was very poor. Uh, so, so that's what it is. You know, why is the market of purifiers not growing? Because I, one doesn't see people buying them very often. Absolutely. See, this is something which I have not been able to answer myself. I keep asking this question. There are only 3% homes in India who have an RO purifier. Okay. And can you believe it that a similar product, similar appliances is automatic washing machine, similar price, one in a home, uh, required by everybody is 10% penetration. Now, do you require a washing machine at home first or do you require a water purifier? I will say a water purifier is a must because concerning your health. Washing machine, you can do it some other way also. But it's a choice of the people. People in India like to pay for convenience rather than health. It's a bit of an unfortunate thing. One. And number two, people still believe boiling is the best way of, uh, of purifying the Is water. it? It is not. But belief of the people cannot be changed. If you boil something, can it remove what is soluble in water? It can't. You have salt in water and you boil, salt doesn't come out. You have sugar in water, you boil, sugar doesn't come out. Similarly, if you have insecticides and pesticides and dissolved impurities in water, can they come out? They cannot. But people, people still feel boiling is a better method than RO purifier. Okay, now this brings me to the most basic question as a consumer for me. You put four water purifiers in front of me, I will have no idea which one is RO, which one is RO Grand, which one is UV, which one is what. How do you differentiate your products and how do you communicate that this is good for you? Yeah, I think that's a problem with the consumer. A consumer is not supposed to know it, but I think consumer is getting educated today with the internet on his hand. Mm -hmm. He can read on what is an RO purifier, what is an EV purifier, what is a better method of purification. Although we have been communicating for last 13 years in television, in all types of medias, but a consumer is a consumer. Consumer looks at an ad only when he requires to buy. When he's not requiring to buy, he's not looking at that. That goes above his head. Okay. How do you disrupt the distribution of these products? Well, what we can do is we are trying to do disruptions by various means. Uh, how you reach to a consumer is by direct marketing. We can't knock at the door of the house, but we need to take an appointment and then go to him house. So we advertise, we get calls, our people go there and try to talk to them. Or through references, we try to go it. So we don't do it ourselves, but we appoint franchises who go and do it in every localities. Then we can put our products into the general trade stores. Mm -hmm. So you, you've gone to buy some white good appliances. It goes about 12,000 stores, your products? I think it's about 12,000 stores uh, at the moment. The plan but to increase it is? I'm not looking at the number of stores much more than the time people are going to spend on the stores. Okay. So that's my focus at this moment of time. Then today the, the buying behavior is changing of the people. From the general trade stores, people mm -hmm. are moving either to large format stores and from large formats, you are moving to the e-commerce platform. Right. How much does e-commerce account for in your total sales? Uh, my sales, e-commerce would be accounting for so about 10%. You said you were an innovator, you've never done anything that someone else has done. 
what do you do about the others who did exactly what you did? Um, before Kent came in, there was no RO purification, RO water purification in the country. After Kent came in, developed the market, the market grew. Then you had people with stronger brands coming in, the likes of AquaGuard, uh, you had the might of Hindustan Unilever, as well as all of them starting their own products. So how do you try to stick your own in front of well, the competition? I would, I would welcome much more people to come in and I will welcome all of them to tell consumers why they should have an RO purifier. I would like 3% figure to go to a 10% figure. Whatever share I can get out of this is left to the consumer to differentiate how am I better than the other. Okay. He may like to buy from me. But more the people, the more the category will grow. You're trying to diversify from water to air and food as well? Yes. And tell us a little more about that. So air impurities is again a big issue in this country. I can't do anything in the outside the room. So in an outside atmosphere, if air is bad, we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. The moment you walk into a bedroom, and the moment you are in office, in a, in a controlled room, you can certainly purify the air. So we made a purifier totally indigenously with the, our own technologies so that we can purify room into air with the HEPA filter. But we are not stopping at that. We have many, many issues into the room air purification. You come into my room and you are infected with certain disease, you're going to leave all the bacteria into my room. Mm. I need to clean that bacteria. If I don't do Have it, you found I'm a solution to that? We are finding solution to that and next year you will get a product from our side. Okay, so this. let's talk about the business itself. Uh, what is your business model like? How much of your revenue comes from water purification? How much of it comes from service of water purification? How much of it comes from the other appliances and what is the mix likely to change going forward? See, at the moment about 90% of my business comes from water purifier, including servicing. The servicing will constitute to about 30% okay. and 60% will go into sale of the appliances. Uh, approximately, I'm telling mm -hmm. you. And 10% is coming from my appliances sector or air purification sector. And going forward, obviously my appliance sector and this will also increase, this will also grow. What percentage it will yield, I have not made a model. So I, my, my model of business is very clear. Be ready and give what consumer desires. So FI18, you said you did around 850 crores of revenues. I, is, I did about 830 crores. 830 and... Uh, and this year we'll close at about 940 crores. 940. You have any financial goals in mind? Well, financial goals, broadly speaking, yes. Uh, we think that 15% growth will come to us naturally. Okay. Whereas in appliances, I could grow much faster because it's a new range of product which I've launched. So in appliances, is there any itch to go ahead and uh, acquire all, uh, some of the brands which are available right now? I'm not uh, doing that thing at the moment. Uh, I'm not into all appliances. Uh, my, uh, my focus is only on the purity aspect and not the convenience aspect. So whichever appliance I'm trying to bring in has a story on purity. Okay, so say someone like a Hindustan Unilever, they have a brand called Purit. If, if they ask you to sell your company to them, would you be able to do that? Well, I'll say no. Because I have a vision, I have a vision to provide benefit to the consumer and I don't think I'm in debt that I must sell them. I'm not here only to multiply my money, I'm here to serve my consumers. Over the years, Kent has grown manifold from a 70 crore company in FY8 to a roughly 700 crores in FY18. Today, Kent enjoys nearly 25% market share in the domestic organized water purifier market. Kent's business model is rather interesting. While majority of their revenues come from water purification, Kent also generates money from servicing these water purifiers. Their current manufacturing capacity is 5 lakh units and more capacity is likely to come on stream soon. Kent today has a strong distribution network of 3,000 distributors reaching 12,000 retail outlets across the country. Not just the country, Kent also plans to increase its sales from export markets as well, for which it has made a big foray into the GCC countries last year. They expect to double their exports in the next two years from current 10% of their revenues. So after a very heartening and insightful conversation with Mr. Gupta, we're now here in his demonstration room. Tell us a little about the evolution of the RO purifier. You started with the RO purifier, 
then you tweaked around and then there is something known as the smart purifier as well? Absolutely, as you can, I'll show you through this room here. Right. We have evolved as we have uh, gone through a uh, time space. Uh, I think uh, there's somewhere there, out there. Uh, well, uh, you can see I have a range of products here. Okay. I'll, I'd like to show you a product which is a Kent Grand, which is the most popular, I think, in terms of we have about 18 models. Okay. This model is the highest selling model. And how Some many does it sell every year? Uh, I would say out, out of a f 5 lakh Haro purifier which sell, this would be at least 1,000,000 1, 1, in number. Okay, okay. It's That's the highest selling water purifier. Right. You are an inventor by nature. You've been inventing a lot of products. Even at IOC, you had a lot of patents to your name. Are you still the inventor or do you have a team right now doing all the well, other I have a team who does it. I can't do everything of my own, right. but I certainly lead the team. I certainly give them an idea what they need to do. And uh, my ideas come not because of myself. My ideas come what we interact with customers okay. and we find what they are talking about. Like they talked about a waste of water. I okay. have a purifier here in which there is no water is wasted. That's right. The RO purifier with no water wastage I've came out. Simple idea that I had a water recovery of more than 50%. We put two tanks in this purifier so that we could store what is what is reject water and one can use it for washing utensils. So with all this purification of water, why didn't you come out with a, 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 a water brand itself? Well, I'm against uh, selling water. Okay, okay. I'm in need. I, I say that we must purify water and drink pure water okay. to protect against waterborne disease. But water is a fundamental right of every individual. I'm against selling water. Okay. okay and especially point. bottled water. Because bottled water is, is a waste of uh, carbon, a waste of energy. You spend more time in uh, transportation of water, energy in transportation of water, right. and then you don't know what to do with the plastic bottle. So what next in the step of water purification itself? Because now, you, uh, I was going through one of your SKUs, it's a smart water purifier, which right. in real time... Right. Right. This is a smart purifier. Okay. You can see you get a display of right. all the information of what is happening in the purifier. That's right. Whether it's uh, giving you pure water or not, it displays that. It displays how much the life of the filters left out here. Mm -hmm. Then gets connected by IoT to our server. Oh. So before you will come to know that something is going to go wrong in my purifier, I will be able to know this. So I can call you back and say, sir, do you think you like to service So if you ever thought it was just a plain simple glass of water you were drinking, it's not just that, it's a lot more than that. And now like he's speaking, there's perhaps even IoT that's only telling you one thing. Not only is data the new oil, data is perhaps the new water as well. But let's move away from water. Yes. Now Kent as a brand, has been positioned very strongly as a water purifier. Right. Lately, you've got into new home appliances as well. Right. How difficult are the challenges for you to move away from a water purifier brand to other home appliances? Having come into water, I realized the air is an issue. Air is an issue, okay. So air is getting contaminated. So we came out with an air purifier, mm -hmm. which is totally made in India. Okay. It's not something like I import from China and do it. Everything is made by us here. Then we came out with a lot of our stuffs uh, on, on purification. Like okay. I like to show you out here. This is a vegetable cleaner. Right. You may understand why do you need to, uh, to clean vegetables. Idea is the vegetables, once they are produced in the farms, mm -hmm. have a lot of insecticides and pesticides That's sprayed right. over them. Okay. And a lot of disease happens because you don't clean your uh, vegetables. So basically what you're trying to say is that the mother brand Kent now stands for purification. We say how Kent is a house of purity. Okay. Anything to do with purity in terms of your air, in terms of your water, in terms of food, uh, we want to be there. Okay. And we want to give health to the people with purifying. So what explains your foray into bread makers and atta makers and all of that? So how is each, that pure? Each has a, an application. How which, are you differentiating your uh, offering? See, once we did with vegetables, we then we talked about food. You know, the biggest problem is like what you said, atta maker. Okay. You need atta with hands. That's right. And if you look at the nails of a housewife or a maid for that matter, if she's uh, needing the atta, I don't think you will like to eat But uh, uh, these are products which are available in the market already, right? How I don't think you have a bread maker and atta maker in every home. Right. There may be few people who may, I don't think I have invented that machine. But what I have done is, how it is applicable in India, that's the way we have done it in India. So now, uh, that, that brings, us, brings me to that section. Now you've spoken about bread yeah. maker. Why are there toasters and, you know, grinders and blenders and juice makers? Do you want to become a whole, whole you home look, look, company? See, look at this a, a slow speed juicer. This is totally designed by us. 
Okay. It's totally invented by us. It's a slow speed juicer. Okay. People take out, people have a habit of drinking juice in India. So they take out juice in a high speed juicer. Yeah. High speed with the friction kills all the nutrients in a juicer. So we think a slow speed juicer is a must. So people went around and imported slow speed juicer. We designed a slow speed juicer which is based on our simple principle of rotating some shaft and then pushing the fruit from this side and taking out juice on this side and in low speed, about 100 RPM. So how so many patents do you have right now? I think I have about 20 patents with me. 20 patents and your competitors aren't uh, uh, pushing in or pressing in, coming out with more aggressive products. How do you, how, how do you keep up? Well, I don't think I'm looking at my competition. I always say if I have to run a 100 meter race, you okay. don't look at, look at the back, okay. you look at the front. So my goalpost is in the front and I say let me run my race. And what Whether is I'm it? succeeding or not, I don't worry about it. Okay, so what, what is your next goalpost then? <laughs> well, I think I have a lot of to do in the, in the food stuff. Okay. There are many, many vacancies, but I'm also working on the air space. So we are designing equipment which will enhance oxygen percentage in your room. What fuels your passion? Well, I think uh, if I look at the, the difficulties which the consumers face, uh, I face, so that, that gives me a, a energy to say, how can I find a solution to this? You've shared all your experiences, all your knowledge with the consumers via the products that you've made. Are there any plans for you to share all the spoils that you've made with this, with the shareholders? Any plans for an IPO perhaps? Well, let me come back to this idea. This has been talked uh, many times to me. That's right. What's your plan to share your uh, prosperity with the consumer? That's right. I look at it, why do you go to the market? Okay. Let's look at the basic principle. You go to the market because you require funds. Okay. You do, I don't believe in going to market to capitalize my valuation. Hmm. I'm not into valuation game. Okay. So basic principle fundamental is you go to public, say, I need this money to do this business. Would you like to be my partner? All right. Right. I would certainly like everybody to be a partner of this, mm -hmm. but at the moment, I think I'm able to meet my requirements from my own reserves. What are your annual uh, capex requirements? So it varies what we want to do, whether we want to building a new factory or mm -hmm. we want to have more machines. Currently, so, so what, whatever we require, we are able to generate enough profits. Okay. And I always say I believe in my money much more than I believe in money of my shareholders, prospective shareholders. Okay. I'll certainly go to them. The moment I require more money, I have a bigger idea. Okay. Then I'll say I'd like to share with you. What is the future of the company likely to be? Well, I think we are a very professional company. Okay. We have professionals sitting into each department, whether mm -hmm. it's sales department or it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a finance department or it's a production department. Uh, professionals are taking care of all the businesses. On board of directors, my son is with me. Okay. He's a young entrepreneur. And we have a strong management to work for. All right. We wish you all the very best for the future of Thank Ken. you, Mangla. Thanks a lot, Mr. Gupta, for joining us. Courtyard by Marriott presents CNBC TV 18 Disruptors.